Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's a great pleasure for me to welcome you all here to this conference on the global digital uh, content market. Uh, we're delighted with the response. I thank you all for your presence here this morning. Uh, we will have a drifting audience, I think, in the course of the two days with, in, in typical Geneva fashion, people will be wandering in and out as they attend also other meetings. Uh, but we did have uh, well over a thousand registrations from 144 countries and I think that uh, strong response is a good indication of the timeliness of an international discussion on developments occurring in the global digital content market as well as of course <coughs> a resounding endorsement of the quality of our speakers, our panellists and our moderators. We really have a quite a stellar cast uh, and we're delighted that they have chosen to participate, to share their experience and their insights, and I should like to thank them all very much uh, for the effort they've made in this regard. I think that we're very fortunate, actually, to uh, be living through an extraordinary transformation in the way in which our culture and the creative works that define it are expressed and communicated. Technology, of course, uh, and notably digital, digital technology and the internet lie at the basis of that transformation. Uh, technology has enabled ease of storage of creative works, it's enabled ease of reproduction uh, and ease of distribution. And those uh, features, in turn, have created the possibility of unprecedented access to repertoires of creative works, uh, the possibility of a worldwide audience, and vastly reduced prices uh, for access to creative works. And all of this has happened in, from an historical perspective, a relatively short period of time. It's only uh, scarcely 20 years ago, in 1995, that commercial activity was permitted for the first time on the internet. Uh, and at that time, the way in which a consumer purchased music was usually, the dominant method, was the purchase of a CD. And the price of a CD was somewhere in the range of $25 to $30, uh, and it contained uh, approximately 15 songs. I think you can compare that <coughs> to the situation today, 20 years only later, where a consumer can have access to a repertoire of millions of songs for uh, around 10 to $15 per month. It's an extraordinary transformation. Uh, and if you compare that extraordinary change to, for example, the cost of access to a football match, uh, you see just how extraordinary the transformation is. Uh, in 1995, the cost of a ticket to see Arsenal play was £12.50. Uh, in the current season, the cost of a ticket to see Arsenal play is £47. I have nothing against Arsenal, by the way, but um, that tra profound uh, transformation, which is unfolding before our eyes and our ears, has produced extensive disruption, not only in the ways in which creative works are stored and distributed, but also in the business architecture uh, that enables or accompanies the production, distribution and consumption of creative works. We've all witnessed, for example, uh, the steady disappearance or at least the growing scarcity of the retailers of the analog world, the bookshops, the, VD shop, the uh, video shops, uh, the record shops and their replacement by online retailers, many of whom or many of which serve indifferently a worldwide uh, customer base as opposed to a local customer base. So the value chains, and that's only the tip of the iceberg, of course, that's just dealing just with retailing, but the value chains of the production, distribution, and consumption of digital works are radically different from those of uh, analog works. Now, creative works, of course, occupy a very special and multidimensional place in our lives. Uh, socially and culturally, they enrich the quality of our lives, they enable the human experience to be communicated, uh, they educate and transmit our culture and knowledge from one generation to the next. Economically, 
The creative industries are a major source of employment. On one recent survey, worldwide survey, it was estimated that they account for about 30 million jobs worldwide. Uh, they contribute to economic growth. Uh, again, according to the same survey, uh, the creative industries generate worldwide about $2.25 trillion, which is more than the GDP of India, which is, according to the IMF, the seventh largest economy in the world. Now, copyright is the central mechanism uh, in the creation of a market for creative works. If you like, it's the dominant interface between the world of creativity and the economic sector. It's the means by which market exchange of creative works occurs. Uh, and as such, it's the principal means for financing the financing of cultural production or the financing of the production of creative works. It enables the creator, of course, to control uh, the commercial exploitation of her works, thereby returning economic value to the creator and ensuring livelihood for the individual creator and economic sustainability for the creative industries. The same features of technology that have produced enormous benefits for consumers, however, have also presented multiple challenges for creators and for their business associates. And this conference will aim to explore both of these sides of the impact of the digital transformation on the creative work. The enormous benefits and opportunities on the one hand, and the radical challenges and even threats on the other hand. What has been the impact, for example, uh, on creators and performers of the new value chains? And are the balances that were built into the copyright system traditionally being preserved in the new uh, global value chains that we are seeing? And how is the territorial copyright system coping with the reality of a global market that the technology has created? I think the questions are, are numerous uh, and the speed of change that we see is so rapid that it's difficult to see transparency here, and it's not that there is a desire to have non-transparency, it's just that one development follows another so rapidly uh, that it is difficult to absorb the last development before the next one arrives, uh, and thus we don't necessarily have a great deal of transparency. And one of the aims of the conference will be <coughs> to increase that transparency, to increase our understanding of what is actually happening. So I think the least what one can say is that uh, this is an exciting and fascinating evolution with fundamental implications for cultural production in the 21st century. We're going to begin the exploration of these questions with uh, a look into the future, into the present as well. Uh, and we're very, very fortunate. It's a great privilege for us to have with us this morning a remarkable man, Jaron Lanier, uh, a man of remarkable talents. He's a computer scientist. Uh, he's a composer, a musician, a performer, an artist, and an author. And above all, I think, if I may say, uh, a wonderful analyst uh, and with an extraordinary intellect. Uh, he'll be well known to many of you through his book, uh, Who Owns the Future? It's really a privilege for us to have Jaron with us this morning. And he's going to talk about the global digital value chain and sustainable creativity.